All right. Looks like we are live. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our second virtual 1 million cups Bentonville. Uh, for those of you who have already tuned in, sitting here anxiously waiting with your coffees, thank you so much. Um, feel free to share this so that everybody else can enjoy uh, this presentation we're going to hear this morning. Uh, for those of you who are new to 1 million cups, uh, my name is Caleb Talley. I'm with Startup Junkie Foundation. Um, and One Million Cups is a project of the Kaufman Foundation. And for those who are not familiar with One Million Cups, it is an opportunity for the community to connect with uh, its entrepreneurs and give them an opportunity um, to lift up their voices, uh, talk about their projects, give entrepreneurial support organizations opportunity to talk about some things that they're doing. Uh, and the premise is that um, the community can come together and solve its problems over a million cups of coffee. Um, so we are going, you know, here's the first of a million so far. Um, this morning we have uh, Endeavor NWA. I'm excited to, to hear their presentation this morning. Um, Endeavor NWA is a global organization founded in 1997. The Northwest Arkansas chapter started about a year ago, probably just over a year ago. And Northwest Arkansas is incredibly lucky to have um, them here in Northwest Arkansas. We have Jessica and Tyler from Endeavor NWA, and I'm going to turn it over to them. Take awesome. it away. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Caleb. Um, we are thrilled to be here and excited to be joining for Million Cups today. Um, Tyler and I are both uh, going to share in this presentation, and so I'll go ahead and kick us off um, with sharing a little bit about just kind of the overview of Endeavor and some of the history and background around um, around the organization. So um, just real quickly, I'll share, Linda Rotenberg is the founder and CEO of Endeavor and um, was actually featured on one of my personal favorite podcasts, Masters of Scale with Reid Hoffman. Um, and she talks about the next Silicon Valley where she shares her inspiration for launching this organization. And so I'll share her story briefly with you guys as I personally find it really inspiring and think it'll give some context into why we've launched Endeavor here and why Endeavor was launched. Um, and so um, it kind of all started for her in the mid 1990s. She was living in Latin America and this was a time when Netscape and Yahoo were all happening and everything was a buzz in the United States. Um, and in Latin America where she had been living, no one was starting a business. And so she kept wondering why and she got her first clue when she was taking a cab ride in Buenos Aires. Her driver had mentioned that he had an engineering degree. And so she said, oh, wow, you know, you must be one of these people that's starting a business. Um, but she couldn't think of the word. And so she kept saying um, the word impresario, which on the episode she shares meant big businessman who had Swiss bank accounts and government connections. And so, you know, she kept saying, no, no, it's another word. So they went back and forth for like quite some time. And then he said, no, I'm sorry, there's no word like that here. And that's when she realized in that moment that there was no word in Spanish for entrepreneur. And so she thought, well, if you can't name it, then you can't be it. And it was this realization that this was more than just words lost in translation. It was really a mindset, um, which in truth is the animating spirit of places like Silicon Valley. And um, what truly draws entrepreneurs to Silicon Valley, as many of the people probably listening know, is that founding mythos of a shared belief that any entrepreneur can disrupt any industry, even if that industry is run by an army of impresarios. And so Linda felt that um, you know, she was just incredibly inspired that we could change this entire system and that we could change this narrative and build other Silicon Valleys. And so, um, Tyler, I believe you're managing our slides perfect. <laughs> um, and so she founded Endeavor in 1997 with the mission of driving job and wealth creation um, and to underserved growth markets globally. And today, Endeavor supports high growth entrepreneurs in nearly 40 markets and eight U.S. regions, including West Arkansas as the sixth U.S. affiliate office. We launched our office with um, our, the managing director, Janem Arcan, who is not with us today, in March of 2019. 
And so um, we're thrilled to be a part of this like thriving entrepreneurial ecosystem here and are obviously encouraged by those at Startup Junkie and the conductor and all over the state that are helping to support the, these narratives. Um, and so basically the, the, it, the high impact entrepreneurs that we're actually looking for are uh, at scale. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that as we kind of get into the selection process and exactly what makes an Endeavor entrepreneur um, as part of our network. Um, let's see, we can skip. Yeah, so see, these are some of our values. Um, which essentially guides some of the uh, ideas for the entrepreneurs that we have in our network. Um, and so, I mean, that's, that's pretty much that slide. <laughs> we could, I kind of, I kind of jumped around a little bit in, in what I was sharing, but um, as of today, we actually have 2059 entrepreneurs in the network. Um, and of course that's representing 37 different regional offices across the US. And so this gives you a little bit of context on, you know, their revenues and the, the, the amount of jobs that they've actually created in their local markets. And so this kind of shares a little bit again of what I shared. You can see Northwest Arkansas is, a, is there as well. Um, and the two black offices that are highlighted in the US are actually the um, headquartered offices. So we have uh, the the main global office is headquartered in New York. And we also have a VC arm, which Tyler can tell you about in a little bit, that's um, out of the San Francisco office. And so this is a little bit so and, and again, Tyler's about to share a little bit more about this with you as well. This is our five step model. Um, and essentially, uh, we have a process in in recruiting entrepreneurs. And so um, this is these different areas is what we're going to now be exploring. And so we'll start with search. All right. So search my actual position here at Endeavor. Um, I joined back in January and it's my position is entrepreneur selection and growth. So part of that is um, search. So what we do is we search for companies that we hope we can provide value for, but also get involved in our network. Um, so Endeavor is completely industry agnostic. So you can see we have agriculture, education, um, smart cities, healthcare, all of those things. And when we meet with candidates and we meet with companies, what we really want to look for is, is this a company that has the potential to build 10x? Um, or if you know it's a smaller company, can they go even far, farther than that? And just to give you some context in regards to the companies that we're looking for, the companies that we're working with, um, when Last year, the average revenue for companies that were selected at our international panels, which I'll get to later, um, but the average revenue was between six and seven million dollars. Um, a lot of them have been in business five to ten years. So one thing that we like to say is we're not necessarily a startup. Uh, we don't help startups. We help scale ups. So that's not to say that, um, especially given everything going on, that we're not super involved with the startup community here. But we feel that our resources are best served when we're looking at companies that are uh, you know, a $10 million company trying to make that leap to the $100 million company. And so part of that is we look at entrepreneurs and we want to see that they have the mission to grow. And a lot of people, sometimes they don't have that. And we encourage you to think big. We want you to say, hey, we're doing all these things great. If we just get a little help in this one area, I think we can like double, triple, 10x our growth over the next few years. And that's where we really step in. And additionally, when we're looking at companies, one thing that makes Northwest Arkansas super unique and I think a, a great place to live and a great place to grow a business is the fact that people here want to give back. They're really invested in Northwest Arkansas. And that's one of the things that we look at when we're evaluating companies is are these entrepreneurs, people that we think if they really grow their business, they're going to stay here. And then also, are they going to give back to the community? Maybe they're going to grow other businesses. Maybe they're going to bring in more people. Their 10 person business is going to go to 100 person business employing people all within the North, Northwest Arkansas region. And that's what we're really here to do is grow this region as a whole. So we search and then obviously we select people. So what that looks like is we'll do first opinion reviews. Um, we have a long pro, not necessarily a long process. It's totally up to you um, how long you want to make it. But um, we start with the selection process. So That'd be a meeting with somebody like myself or Janem, um, who Jessica mentions our uh, managing director here in, in Northwest Arkansas. And from there, we'll go to a second opinion review. And those second opinion reviews, 
you meet with uh, mentors in our network, whether that's somebody local, um, it could be one of our board members, or it could be somebody in a different country that um, specializes in whatever industry that you're in. And so that would be something like a second opinion review. And from there, we'll move you to our local selection panel. And the local selection panel is you'll work with somebody like me to establish a profile. And that profile is a 10 page deep dive into your company. Um, and so we'll look at your financials, your growth strategy, products, um, people you're looking to hire, your team, all of those things to present to our board or our panelists at our local selection panel. So they have a really good understanding. Um, more of a bird's eye view, obviously it's 10 pages, so we can't dive into everything, but we get uh, we get pretty detailed with it. So by the time you go to our local selection panel, um, all of the panelists should have a very, very good idea of your company. And a lot of the feedback we've actually gotten is putting these profiles together is really helpful for the entrepreneurs in terms of direction and growth um, that they wanna do regardless of whether or not it's with Endeavor. But hopefully it is with Endeavor. Um, so that local selection panel basically looks like our board members, or our panelists, which are um, extremely impressive business leaders in the area. Um, panelists come from, you know, we've working on different people from Little Rock, different people from Northwest Arkansas. We're really trying to get a um, wide variety of people in here. And our board members are amazing business leaders who you can uh, find a little bit more information about on our website. But that local selection panel will be a unanimous decision by the board. So you'll do usually two to three different presentations. It's not necessarily a pitch. It's a like five to 10 minute introduction on your company. And from there, we'll do about 45 minutes of questions from the panelists. And based on the profile, they should have a great understanding and you should be able to have a very meaningful conversation. And if they all decide that you're ready for the international panel, it has to be a unanimous vote, but they'll move you on to our international selection panel which is obviously pre-COVID, uh, was in amazing places where we have offices, um, some places where we don't necessarily have an office, but um, are just cool locations. So we had one in uh, Bali, Lake Como, Italy. Um, and then we also have some here in San Francisco or New York. Um, and we're hoping to get one here in Northwest Arkansas in the next few years, which would be really cool. But again, it's the same sort of uh, process as our local panel except for what we'll do is you'll have panelists from all over the world. So you'll have business leaders from um, any, I mean, any country where we really have a market that are the top business leaders within that area. So it's a great way to expand your reach and expand the questions that you get, um, especially if you're looking at going into a global market. And I mentioned the people that we're looking for. So we say, we look at the entrepreneur, we look at the business and we look at the timing. The timing's an inflection point. Are you at a point where if we feel if we get involved in our network, we can really help you? Um, whether that's global expansion, maybe you're trying to bring a new product out. Um, you know, is there something that Endeavor as a network, we really think that we can help you uh, get to that next stage? And again, I talked about the entrepreneur. We want somebody that's thinking big and that's ready to give back to the community and the business. We want to, we want to find a business that is going to be efficient at large scale, that's going to jump, that's going to grow, that's going to take off, um, hopefully in the next couple of years, especially with the help of Endeavor. And so that scale up, what that really looks like for us is Endeavor at its core is a network. It's a network of business leaders, investors, mentors, entrepreneurs um, all over the world where we can come together. And similar to Caleb uh, said earlier, you know, you, you share a cup of coffee and who knows what can happen. So when we bring our mentors and our network to you, what we're really bringing is access. We're bringing access to um, new thoughts, new ideas, maybe something that's gonna push you, but also people within a network that know how to conduct a business that have done what you're trying to do and they've done it at scale and they've done it successfully. So you don't have to hit the road bumps. And that's the big thing. That's where Endeavor comes in. We wanna try to bypass those road bumps and get you in touch with the right people that way, you don't have to deal with that. All you're worried about is growing your company. And so that looks like our advisory boards. So we can set, uh, set up um, different mentorship and strategic advisory boards. We have, again, mentor access and market access. So um, that's access to market leaders all across all over the globe. And then we also have a platform called Endeavor Open. And once you're selected as an uh, Endeavor entrepreneur, which would be getting selected at that international stage, um, Endeavor Open is actually something that you will have access to right now. Um, you'd have to go through somebody like me to kind of get access. 
but think of it as like a LinkedIn or Facebook, but strictly for Endeavor entrepreneurs and, Ende and the Endeavor network. So it allow you access to go through and find uh, whether that's investors or mentors, peer-to-peer -peer connections, uh, potential business partners, anything like that within our Endeavor network, you will now have access to. And then Endeavor Verticals is something like um, a vertical roadshow. So for instance, we've uh, recently, uh, obviously again, before COVID, um, had a roadshow uh, or a vertical show in New York when it was uh, retail. So our Endeavor entrepreneurs that are focused in retail all met up in New York and met with industry leaders within the retail industry for um, an extended period where they had a chance to pick the industry leaders' brains, they listened to presentations, they also had peer-to-peer -peer connections, so other, other Endeavor entrepreneurs from all over the globe um, had the chance to meet in person and talk about their experiences and what's been working well for them. And then Endeavor Outliers, I'll get to in a little bit, but um, really that's just the top 5% of Endeavor companies, so the top 5% in terms of growth and revenue. Um, and then access to talent, we actually have really cool partnerships set up with um, like places like Inseed, Harvard, and Stanford, where we'll do executive education programs. Um, so that's as part of the Endeavor Network, Harvard, Stanford, um, they've put together programs for Endeavor entrepreneurs, and that's gonna be leadership, innovation, um, all sorts of different education opportunities for Endeavor entrepreneurs. And then we also have talent fellowships where we've partnered with companies like Bain & Co, um, EY, Harvard Business School, where we can get um, interns into your company or uh, people from EY where they'll come and send maybe a summer or a month or a week working on spe um, specific and special projects that you're maybe not familiar with. Maybe you don't have um, the talent right now to deal with those projects. Well, we'll get people in there and they can actually accomplish those um, projects, which is really cool. And then access to smart capital. Again, as in, uh, Jessica said earlier, we have a VC fund. Um, they actually just closed a $120 million uh, uh, round, which is very exciting. So they are now looking to deploy that fund, which should be great. But um, Endeavor Catalyst, which is the VC fund, is, is part of that um, access to capital, which if you become an Endeavor entrepreneur, it's a rules-based um, investment. So you, I'll touch on this a little bit later, but essentially if you become an Endeavor entrepreneur and you're raising a $5 million round or more, um, you're almost guaranteed an investment from Endeavor Catalyst, which is a, a great opportunity for a lot of companies. And then also we have our investor network. Um, as we work with all these companies, as we have offices in San Francisco, we have great, great connections to investors all over the globe, um, specifically for somewhere like Northwest Arkansas. This is super meaningful because you get a chance to get access to investors that you wouldn't normally get just in this region. And again, as I said, um, Endeavor is completely industry agnostic. As you can see here, um, there's obviously people from all over the world. US, we're only at 6%, so we're hoping to grow that. Um, the US is our newest market as far as where Endeavor has expanded, so we're really hoping to grow that. Um, but then you can also see the companies by vertical and check out just the different um, areas that our companies make up. And Endeavor Outliers, which I mentioned earlier, again, is the top 5% of Endeavor entrepreneurs. And as an outlier, um, you can see we have companies like Kareem and Mercado Libre. Those are the companies uh, prior to joining, uh, joining Endeavor that I was really familiar with um, just because of how big they are. We have those types of companies um, and they get sort of a one-on-one -on -one, peer to peer um, opportunities as far as just within the Endeavor network. Um, it's where our global team is a little bit more hands-on. And after you are, we do the search, selecting, scaling. Yeah, we talk about um, kind of the spread. And so this is really testing our hypothesis on how these connections um, relate to one another and really how this ecosystem has grown over time in these 37 different markets. And so um, the Endeavor Insight team is tasked with really collecting all of that data and analyzing where we've made the most impact. And so they usually take these um, five questions, um, who inspired you to become an entrepreneur? Um, where were you employed before becoming an entrepreneur? Who invested in your company? Who mentored you as you built your company? And have you founded any additional companies? And through those questions, we're actually able to track kind of these maps that are that we create with these relationships that they've been able to establish and connect those together um, in the in the little highlighted quadrants um, below. 
And so what you see is that, as I spoke earlier, you know, Linda really started in, in Buenos Aires, and this is one of the oldest maps that we have. So, you know, back in 1997, 15 years later, six high impact entrepreneurs in Buenos Aires reflected in this many connections um, in relation to the various uh, key categories that are evaluated in some of that data mining. And so this is this is really kind of showcasing the power of the few, if you will, um, and really the the impact that the multiplier effect truly has. Um, and then this is kind of a representation of that ecosystem if we did not have those entrepreneurs. So we truly believe in the transformational um, impact that entrepreneurs can have in any region and are hoping that um, maybe in a few years, Tyler, we will have a map just like that one. <laughs> That's the plan. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and so th these are some of the lessons that you know we've kind of learned from creating these regional maps from all over. Um, Entrepreneur-led ecosystems develop, uh, or I'm sorry, development uh, works best. Um, a small number of high-impact entrepreneurs turn out um, uh, to be especially critical. It takes more than just uh, startups, scale-ups drive most wealth and job creation. And entrepreneurs who have successfully exited should be encouraged to become active angel investors um, and or VCs. And so we feel like that you know, this is kind of, uh, you know, one of those moments where you realize the true impact of scale up companies and uh, really the the meaning behind our entire initiative and our, our entire passion for endeavor and and really helping these companies scale to the level that really makes that true impact in regional ecosystems. Right. So, I mean, just looking at that map from Buenos Aires, you can see we want to sustain that growth. And so part of what we do and what we ask as Endeavor in Northwest Arkansas is we have we have a system where this only works if these entrepreneurs and these businesses are committed to giving back to the community. So for us, what that means is one, you get selected as an Endeavor entrepreneur. Then once you've gone through the process, we ask that you become a mentor, maybe a panelist, because now you're familiar with the process. Now you're familiar with what it took. Now you're familiar with what Endeavor's offered you. We ask that you come back and you help out with Endeavor. And then maybe from there, we go to a board member, um, an investor in Catalyst. Like I said, we have a board member that's invested in Catalyst as well. And then um, hopefully at that point, you know, you are that big bubble on the map. You're, you're the person that's created all of those tangents, all of those businesses, all those connections um, through your growth as a scale up high impact entrepreneur, but now you've impacted others, you've mentored others. And now the, all those people can draw that, that line to you and your company. Um, so I'll just touch on Endeavor Catalyst really quick, just so you get an idea of what that's all about. Um, so again, it's, it's a rules-based investment strategy. So if you are an Endeavor entrepreneur, again, that's getting selected at the international selection panel and you're raising a round of $5 million or more, and that round is led by a qualified institutional investor, Endeavor will invest up to 10% of that round, not to exceed 2 million. I believe that changes occasionally. Um, however, that 10% is usually where it's gonna stay. And what that means is if you're in good standing with Endeavor, um, if you're not under some crazy investigation or anything like that, you're guaranteed an investment from Endeavor, which is could be huge for a lot of companies um, especially regional companies that you know aren't going to be raising the $100 million rounds. So in, um, Endeavor Catalyst is really a way for us to give back to those entrepreneurs, but also a way um, for those entrepreneurs to gain access again to uh, more money and also a great, great global network of investors. And a lot of investors actually invest in our fund because Endeavor as a global organization grants them access to companies um, that they wouldn't normally see. If you're a Silicon Valley VC and you're always hearing pitches from the Valley, you're not necessarily going to hear or know about a company um, in the Middle East or in Africa. And that's where Endeavor comes in. It gives investors to a lot of access um, to different companies and a lot of uh, companies that you would never even hear about until they hit that unicorn status. Um, so again, we work with a lot of, a lot of different investors and VCs 
So here's just a few um, bigger names, you know, in the region or in, not in the region, but in the U.S. that we work with um, and that invest alongside our fund. But also we have network connections within that. So if you're raising money and you know somebody uh, at General Atlantic that you really want to get in touch with, we can potentially set up those connections. And also one of the things that we've been doing or that I've been doing quite a bit is setting up um, investor connections with investors that aren't interested in investing with your company. And what that does is it allows you to have a candid conversation when it comes to term sheets, your valuation, your ask. Um, you know this person isn't going to be biased because they're not going to invest, but they're also in an institutional investor that does this all the time. So it allows you to have that conversation, an honest conversation, without actually having to pitch to somebody, which is super valuable um, as you're going through this process. And then as you can see, Endeavor Catalyst has made over 130 investments. However, there hasn't been a whole lot of action in the US. And so we would love to see a little dot over here sometime mm -hmm. soon um, with Northwest Arkansas. So that's really what, um, as an office, we're really trying to do. We're, we're, we want to give access to companies here um, and help them grow and help them scale in a way that previously without and access to a network like Endeavors would either take lots of time or is just not possible. Um, and so we want to help you and we want to help you grow. And whatever that looks like to you, it's again, it's totally up to you. Endeavor is not a plug and play program. It's totally um, at your pace, at your scale. So some companies go through that you know, first opinion review to that international selection process in as little as you know, four to five months. Some companies, it takes about two years, um, which I think makes Endeavor really cool is because it's something that allows companies to do things at their own pace. You don't feel super uncomfortable, but at the same time, you're also constantly thinking about that growth and about giving back to the community. Um, so here's just another exit um, for Endeavor Catalyst. So FIGS, um, it's one of our Miami companies. Uh, obviously, there's plenty of global companies as well. And let's look a little bit just as we go through our global companies. Um, again, these are some of our larger players in the area that you may have heard of. And I will pop over to one other little presentation real quick. And so basically, um, as the million cups um, a lot of the times we end or the presentations end with an ask or a question to the audience um so our ask to the audience i'll let jessica take it is to listen to our podcast um so yeah we um we actually launched a podcast in march of this year um and are going through and in, in, in interviewing a variety of different investors from uh all over the us and Hopefully we'll actually have, you know, as Tyler showed you that slide earlier, there's a couple uh, firms that are actually going to be a part of the show that were on that slide. Um, but this is really just an opportunity for us to have some candid conversations with investors around really how to address a lot of the issues that entrepreneurs are finding themselves in during this crisis. And so that is our first uh, season, if you will. And so definitely check that out. And then we have one more ask. Um, that Tyler can kind of share a little bit more about. Yeah, so as um, Caleb mentioned, we have been in office for a little over a year now. Um, and so we're at the point where we're starting to recruit more companies. We've been working with a lot more companies. And now um, rather than leaning on our global team and our other US offices for mentors, we're trying to expand our local mentor network. So if you're listening, if you're watching and you're interested in Endeavor, um, you, you know, felt called to what we had to say, or if you just are a great business leader in the community and you think that um, you'd be a great mentor, but perhaps you're already mentoring companies, um, please reach out to us. We're really trying to build our network. And as a mentor, you also gain access to um, Endeavor Open, which I, made, which I mentioned earlier, and access to our Endeavor network. So there's a lot of um, really cool things and programs that are set up for our mentors. But also it's a way for us to get involved a little bit more in the local community. And we really want to try to grow and um, reach more companies. So if you have companies in mind that you think would fit the Endeavor criteria, or if you think you would be a great mentor, please reach out to us. 
Um, our website is in, uh, endeavornwa.org or .com. Sorry, endeavornwa.org. Yeah. Is it .org? Okay, yeah. sorry. .org. And um, please reach out to us. There's plenty of information on there. Um, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to potentially get coffee with you one day soon. <laughs> and, um, we also do uh, planning on doing mentor events, investor events. So as a mentor, you get, gain access to all of those. But more importantly, um, it's a way to you, for you to help our local companies and help our local economy grow. And at that, um, I think that is it. So we'll toss it back to Caleb. Awesome. All right. Well, first of all, how dare you steal my final question um, <laughs> by answering it already? No, that's fine. Um, so we do have a couple of questions in the comments and um, hopefully we will get some more. Um, our first question is from Taylor. It says in your search process, you mentioned quite a bit about growth potential. How important is profitability in your selection? Um, so as far as profitability goes, um, I think, I mean, you see it now there's, there's plenty of pre-revenue companies that are, that are raising money all the time. Um, so I think profitability is obviously we want a company that's going to be profitable at some point. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be profitable right now. We, we are actively working with companies, um, that are pre, uh, pre revenue. So I wouldn't stress too much about that. And Taylor had a second question. What is the cost to an entrepreneur to join Endeavor? Great question. Glad you asked. Um, so Endeavor is a nonprofit. So it's completely free to the Endeavor entrepreneur. It's a, a completely free to go through the process. Um, we do ask if you are selected as an Endeavor entrepreneur and you feel that Endeavor has provided value that you do give back. Um, that's part of how we fund our office. That's part of how we really try to provide services to entrepreneurs. Um, but going through the process, becoming an Endeavor entrepreneur is all completely free. And, um, you know, we really try to provide the best value we can. Some of those um, uh, different events and things may cost you a little bit of money. So, for instance, like Harvard or Stanford programs, um, usually those are just at cost to the entrepreneur. We don't make any money on that. So it's just going to be completely whatever the cost of those events and um, programs are. And if someone signs up as a mentor, can they travel the world with you as well? Oh, please do. I'd love to. I'm, hey, I'm still waiting to travel the world here. I'm, I'm hoping that we get a chance to do that soon. Yeah, I know. Sign, we, sign me up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, um, don't have any more questions coming in uh, to comment. Sec oh, Brian has a question. Uh, what specific potential do you see for Northwest Arkansas? Oh, awesome question. Um, for me, I mean, you look at Northwest Arkansas and you see like a Tyson, a JB Hunt, and a Walmart. Um, but we don't really see those those companies outside of that. And we want to create, you know, the next Walmart, the next Tyson, the next JB Hunt, and whatever industry that might be. But we want to really provide um, an avenue for companies to go from that, you know, one to two million dollar a year revenue company to that hundred million dollar to to that next step to a way where people start looking at Northwest Arkansas and they say, oh, it's not just Walmart land. There's a lot going on here. We want it to become the next startup, the next scale up hub. Um, and I think we have that potential, but it's just historically, we just haven't had that access within our um, within our area to, to grow with that scale and to grow with that potential. And I hope that's where we can step in and bridge that gap. Yeah, I think something that maybe even Janem mentioned on uh, the Startup Junkies podcast was just that, you know, really, I think what Endeavor will provide long term is the ability for all of these global, these other global, globally uh, scoped regions that we impact to also have access to this ecosystem. And so the more we kind of bridge some of those relationships together, I think the more powerful this region itself will be. Um, am I saying that correctly, Tyler? Is there anything no. yes. to that? But I mean, it's it's really, it's a beautiful way to truly speak to kind of the multiplier effect um, aspect that Endeavor really can provide. So that's exciting. Yeah, I think, I think just the core value of Endeavor is, you know, we want to grow the local economy and the best way to do that is through entrepreneurship. And I think that's, that really sums it up. Um, so yeah, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of potential here and I'm really excited to see where Northwest Arkansas 
is in, you know, one to even five, 10 years. Yeah. And Robert has a question. Does your organization have multilingual capacity to help entrepreneurs? Absolutely. So um, again, we, we work with organizations. Brazil's our largest office. Um, so we have entrepreneurs from all over the world, all of different language capacities. Um, however, we do have most of our communication in English. Um, that's not to say that we don't have, for instance, there was a um, Spanish speaking only webinar that we hosted uh, like last week. So there's lots of opportunities as far as language goes. But um, for the most part, a lot of our communications, our profiles are all written in English just to have a centralized um, language. But as far as other language potential, absolutely. There's plenty of people and mentors um, where English is their second, maybe third language. So. Chandler asks, is growing the pipeline in Northwest Arkansas something that will happen line linearly as the area grows in general, or are there are some factors you have identified that will help catalyze more high growth startups, either being founded or scaling to the point they're ready for Endeavor in Northwest Arkansas? Yeah, so um, I don't know if Jess has any, I'll let, you, I'll let yeah, you Yeah, well, I think it just kind of speaks to, you know, what, what we spoke about earlier on the multiplier effect concept, which is that, you know, Endeavor, uh, there, there have been several companies that have been scouting to even potentially move some of their offices to Northwest Arkansas because they know that there is an Endeavor connection there. So maybe they're um, coming from a different Endeavor regional office and they're looking to potentially relocate because it makes sense for their business to be close to, you know, additional opportunities that the NWA region can provide. So I wouldn't say it would be exclusively linearly, linear, linearly, uh, but I, I think, you know, it, it is something that there, there will be some element of uh, an organic growth. Um, but I think, you know, because of the connections that we have in these various 37 markets, that that will heavily impact its catalyzing growth. Yeah, and I think just to add to that and give an example is we actually just had an Endeavor entrepreneur from Dubai that just opened an office in Bentonville. Um, yeah. So super interesting company, but um, just again showing like, you know, they came to Bentonville and they're obviously meeting with, uh, you know, the big three out here, but they stopped by our Endeavor office. And next thing you know, they're opening an office in Bentonville, um, which is super cool for us to see. Um, it was kind of my first experience of seeing um, that endeavor effect, but also I think um, you know there's a, there's plenty of offices uh, around the world that also run scale up programs. So that's something that we're um, you know I don't know what that looks like for our office. Like we have amazing scale up programs here, like Startup Junkies involved with. So um, we don't really know what that looks like, but it's it's definitely on our on our radar um, as far as growing those companies to the point where they do fit that endeavor selection criteria. Um, but I also believe that there's probably companies that um, maybe we missed or maybe we're not aware of that do that do have that uh, criteria met already within Northwest Arkansas region, um, or maybe we expand just a little bit, um, for instance, to like a Tulsa or something like that. But um, our our main goal is, need your help, right? <laughs> yes, our, that's yeah. where that's where the viewers come in and mentors come in. Um, but yeah, we we are very excited. We think that. Um, in you know, Northwest Arkansas has great growth opportunity, and we hope that we can provide that opportunity to companies locally. And Daniel has uh, a two-part question. He wants to know about your backgrounds, Jessica and Tyler, and how you got involved with Endeavor. Okay. Hey, uh, Daniel. <laughs> that's a. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you asked. I guess that that probably was something we could have started with. Yeah. Uh, yeah sorry about that. So uh, my background, I actually graduated law school back in May, um, focused mainly on business law, venture capital, private equity, um, just more on the legal side. Um, that's kind of where I've always envisioned myself going. Um, and I randomly got involved with Endeavor through Startup Junkie. So I, so I owe Caleb and uh, Jeff and Haley at Startup Junkie a uh, big thank you because they introduced me to Janem. Uh, I guess it was right before Christmas and it just sort of worked out perfectly. It was um, an idea that I really, that just really resonated with me. And, um, you know, it was, it was something that I'm really passionate about. I've grown up and been involved and, and tried to be involved with different entrepreneurial organizations. 
Um, and when I went to law school, I knew I wanted to, you know, still maintain that connection to the entrepreneurial community. And um, this obviously was a way for me to do that. And so um, super grateful to be a part of Endeavor. And I joined back in January. So I've been with Endeavor almost six months now. And then my background, um, I guess after graduating, I, I moved to Austin. I, I actually went to college in, in Arkansas at Harding University um, and then moved to Austin that was affiliated with an entrepreneurial support organization uh, in Austin called um, the Capital Factory and then uh, pivoted and started working for a startup in Dallas and then realized the true impact that an entrepreneurial support organization can have on a company's growth and scalability and profitability. And, um, and so had a friend that I had gone to college with that reached out to me and asked if I would like to join um, a entrepreneurial support group that she was aware of that was in Little Rock called the Venture Center. And so I joined in a uh, in a more programmatic uh, space, uh, working kind of operationally and then uh, and then eventually in, in a marketing capacity there. And um, through all of the connections that Arkansas has somehow got in touch with Janem and just fell absolutely in love with the entire uh, Endeavor story and, and and their passion for creating these regional ecosystems that help to connect one another um, and saw that as a huge growth opportunity for the state and was excited to join. So yeah, that's kind of my, my story, <laughs> my journey here. Well, Northwest Arkansas is lucky to have both of y'all on the Endeavor NWA team for sure. Yeah, we and love I, it, right? Yeah. <laughs> And I think that's all the questions we have. So um, I think that just about does it. Um, and since you already took my last question, we'll just go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, just want to let everybody know that we're still going to do these 1 million cups um, every two weeks. Uh, two weeks from today, which will be June 24th, we will have a presentation from Angela Grayson. Um, she's going to uh, present at the next 1 million cups. Um, keep Keep an eye out on the One Million Cups Facebook page for more details. Uh, and um, that's all I have. Thank awesome. well, everybody thank for joining you us. Much for having us Taylor. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks for the questions. <laughs> Absolutely. I also want to give a shout out to uh, Brian Fitton of Go Rogue X for all the setup here. He's He's been invaluable um, helping us put this on today. Absolutely. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Brian.